In 2002, I joined the faculty of NYU's Stern School of Business. More than 4,000 students have taken my brand strategy course. My students are an impressive group, ranging from Marines from Georgia to IT consultants from Delhi. They're there to learn the time value of money, strategy, and consumer behavior. But our time together frequently veers from brand strategy to life strategies. What career should I choose? How can I set myself up for success? How do I reconcile ambition with personal growth? What can I do now so that I don't have regrets when I'm 40, 50, or 80? We address these questions in the most popular session of the course, the final three-hour lecture titled The Algebra of Happiness. In this session, we examine success, love, and the definition of a life well-lived. In May 2018, we posted an abridged version of the talk on YouTube. The video was viewed by over 2 million people in the first 10 days. My publisher was nudging me to write a follow-up book to The Four, The Hidden DNA of Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google. And much to her horror, I informed her that my second book would be about happiness. I have no academic credibility or credentials to indicate I should counsel people on how to live their lives. I've had several businesses fail, was divorced by 34, and recently had the most successful venture capitalist in history contact the partners at General Catalyst, my backers at L2, to discourage them, no joke, from investing in L2 because I was insane. No, General Catalyst invested anyway, and they did really well. In fact, you'd need to swim pretty hard to view my life as a framework for happiness. I grew up an unremarkable kid in California in the 70s, skinny and awkward. I received mediocre grades and didn't test well either. I applied to UCLA and was rejected, which didn't seem like a big deal at the time, as my father assured me that someone with your street smarts doesn't need college. I had no street smarts, just a father with a new family who didn't want to pay for college. He did, however, secure me a job installing shelving. The job paid 15 to 18 bucks an hour, which seemed like a lot of money at the time. I could buy a nice car, my only real goal at the time. During my senior year in high school, we'd walk into Westwood Village and get ice cream, and my friends would shoplift. I'd head home when my friends began shoving Peter Frampton shirts into their pants, not because I was more ethical than them, but because my single mother just couldn't handle a call from the LAPD to come get their son. Walking back from Westwood Village, I crossed Hillgard Avenue, where UCLA sororities lined the street. It was homecoming week, and there were thousands of young women standing in front of their houses singing songs and generally looking like a cross between a Norman Rockwell painting and a late-night Cinemax movie. At that moment, I decided I needed to go to college and went home to write another letter to UCLA admissions. I told them the truth. I'm a native son of California, raised by an immigrant single mother who is a secretary, and if you don't let me in, I'm going to be installing shelving the rest of my life. UCLA admitted me nine days before class started. My mom told me that as the first person to attend college on either side of the family, I could now do anything. Mm -hmm.